I thought Hurricane Lee was supposed to miss us. Is that a guy? That is a guy. What is this about? What is that about? Ah! The Matrix has me. See that? They're watching me. I see you over there, agents of the Matrix. Run! Are my window? Hey, did you check my windows? Go check my windows too. I said go check my windows too. Wait, don't do it. I'm so horrible. Here, run out into the lightning storm with this. Hurry, Troy, check them. Check the windows. Are they good? Are they good? Yeah, they're good. Let's go. I don't like you. <laughs> Howdy, folks. Good day to you guys, and welcome back. I'm glad you guys are here. We are returning to our EJ25. It's a 2.5 liter uh, Subaru engine. It's the one that goes to the Rubisu Outback I've got out in the parking lot. Um, this thing started as a simple water pump job and it turned into a broken bolt uh, in the block. I repaired the broken bolt in the last video and now we have another broken bolt right up here on the belt tensioner. Focus, 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 there we go. Yeah, I went to put the tensioner on and it pulled the threads right out of the block again. That guy is gonna go right there. Um, that didn't feel very good to me. I mean, it's, that's tight, but, oh no, you gotta be kidding me. And, well, how about that? We got more ruined threads on the Subaru engine. Come on, car gods. I, we just had a major victory. Now there's a major failure. So, that's two bolts I tried to put in, two bolts that pulled the threads. I had to end up ordering another time cert kit. This one is the, I think it's an M10 size. Let me see. Yeah, M10 by 1.25. That's the thread pitch for the bolt that goes onto the belt tensioner. So we're gonna go ahead and drill these threads out one more time. We're gonna tap it. I'm going to install a repair insert in the hole that I threaded and drilled and tapped. And then once that is done, we'll be able to bolt the tensioner back onto the front of this block. Then I can put the time belt on. Then we can put the covers back on. Then maybe at some point I can put the thing back inside of the Subaru that's still sitting outside the parking lot. Uh, if you are uh, uh, not familiar with this particular project, there are several videos on it. Just check down inside of this video's description and you will find the links in chronological order for, uh, for all those other videos. So without any further ado or introduction, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to take the drill to another aluminum engine block. So stay tuned because this is gonna be a very good video. Opening Z hood. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look who that guy is. All right, let's take a look at what we're taking a look at here. There is our stripped out hole and I'm gonna go ahead and get into this guy uh, with the drill and we're gonna drill these threads out. Now, my time cert kit did come uh, with a replacement or with the drill bit in order to drill these holes. So we're going to use the stuff that, uh, that they gave us. So let's get this thing chucked up. There we go. Drill bit clickage. Let us get started with some cutting lubricant down in that hole. Now, this part of the block actually passes through uh, into the... Uh, uh, I want to call it a cooling jacket. Like what I'm saying is you can basically look through there and you can see the cylinder, uh, the cylinder liner protruding down from the block or actually going sideways from the block because this is a flat four engine. Uh, either way, this goes all the way through into the cylinder. So if I were to punch through this hole with this drill bit and continue to drill after I make it past that hole, there's potential you could actually drill into a cylinder and that would not be okay. So we're gonna make sure we don't do that. Anyway, I've got some cutting oil installed. Let's go ahead and get these threads drilled out. Is that spinning straight and true? Yeah. No. It's not. Here we go. More speed. It's not what I wanted to happen. That was 
because my drill is super clutch. Okay, let's try that again. Not a machinist. Oh, come on, don't do that. There we go. Okay, we're through. All the threads are gone, hooray. Let's blow that thing out with some air. That was uh, kinda ugly. But it'll work, it's a hole. Okay, quick change out of the bit, and I now have this counter bore tool. Uh, what this thing is gonna do is it's gonna cut away a lip or a chamfer rather, so I can fit the flared end of this insert. So we're gonna cut down in the metal about yay far. See that little step on the bit right there? We're gonna cut down about that far. That way when we thread this uh, insert into that hole after we cut threads into it, it can sit a little recessed into the block and uh, the end of this chamfer right here will not uh, protrude and interfere with the fitment. So we're gonna throw a little bit more oil on there. Get some more lube that in position and start the cut. That's about right. Looks good. Okay, we'll go with that. A little bit more spray to clean it out. Okay, now we can go in there with the tap and we can tap these, uh, that hole to the thread pitch that's gonna match the outer diameter on our insert. I see some metal pieces in there. Let me clean that up a little bit. So we have our tap that came with the Time Cert thread repair kit. We're going to use their tap, but we do need to break into my tap and die set because we're going to need a driver for that tap. That one's too small. That one's somewhere else. We'll use the big T handle. So what we're going to do is get this thing set up, and I don't know if this T handle has clearance and it does not. So I need to I'll put a socket on the end of that or something. Man, I've got it figured out. This was the appropriate tool. I have to, uh, have to loosen it. And then those little fingers will open up. That will fit the base of the tap. There we go. That's what we're looking for. So then we'll take our T-handle and put it inside of our tool. Tighten that down. Let's get some more lubricant on it. There we go. And let's go ahead and tap and cut new threads for our insert. My icrometer tells me that we're aligned up and down, left and right. So let's, uh, let's start the turn here, see what she does. It's going in pretty smooth. Very smooth, good cut. That's because these engine blocks are made out of cheese. That's why it's so smooth.
pretty sure we're through all the way. Reds feel good. Let's go ahead and start backing it out and see what they look like. That was a very easy cut. But this is also a new tap and it's very sharp too. So you can see how that's okay. That's nasty. All right, let's blow. Watch this, we're gonna go in past the hole. say that that's pretty cherry right there. Those look good. A little bit of chatter from where I had to drill. That drill wasn't going so well, but it's threaded nonetheless. So let's go ahead and prep our insert and get that thing driven into position. Okay, next up we've got the thread installation inserter device. It's basically just a bolt that goes on the end of our T-handle. So what I will do is we'll thread this guy on to our installer. Let's see if it's gonna thread up. Yep, yeah, that looks good, okay. Shoe, the thread's caught, so we know we have a good start. Let's throw some, some Loctite in there. We'll get this insert inserted. Thread her all the way down and we torque it until, uh-oh, it's not going down all the way. Look at that. Okay. I can't run this down all the way because it will run into the, uh, the cylinder wall inside. Here, let's try a full send real quick. I tried to thread this thing down onto the installer a little bit, and it started to hang up as if the installer was kind of gripping onto it. So maybe it's got enough here to get past whatever whatever's in the way. Go on, thread. What I'm gonna do is probably thread this down and then I'll put another insert on this installer. Yeah, yeah, it's not going any farther. Uh-oh. Oh, it's getting stuck. That's not what we want. That is not what I wanted to have happen right there. Okay. All right, so now I'm gonna run another insert down onto this installer and then finish this thing off. Uh, hopefully I can do that before we run out of thread lock. Now I'm getting nervous. I may end up sacrificing this uh, this insert right here. I wish they had like a stopper on this so I could just kind of lock it down. But uh, it's not equipped with such things. Hmm. See, it's stopping right there. Tell you what, I'll just put it in the vise. let the vise hang on to it. Nope, it's not gonna work. Back to the pliers. We're just gonna force it down. All I need is some threads on this side to grip onto that. Here we go. This is the unorthodox way. I did not intend to do this uh, in this fashion. Now let's see if I can finish that guy off. Get in there, you. I'd hate to have to drill this out a second time. This is failing. My insert is failing, you guys. 
and I broke it. Okay. It has failed. Dang. I mean, it's in there, but I've got this little lip protruding. I wonder if I didn't grind it down far enough. Let's see how well this, yeah, that's not gonna work. Uh, this thing broke. It's not okay. I don't know what to do. Let's see if the bolt threads into it. Let's start with that. Socket coming in. All right, that's going in, that threads. And it looks like I only broke that lip on the insert. I think I'm going to just grind that thing flush. Yeah, we have threads. I just, I need to grind that off flush. That way the, uh, the tensioner can just sit flush against it. I think we're we're okay here with what's uh what's going on right now. All right, loud noise is incoming. Got the angle grinder, little ziz wheel pad on it. I think I can get in there and grind away that uh, that piece that's sticking out. <laughs> Fingers crossed. top right here. Installed. The bolts are on. See what she does. It's either gonna, it's gonna work or it's gonna break off. I mean, those are our only two options. She's threading in. And kickage. That's a victory, guys. We got it. That guy's in. It's on. It's tight. It's torqued. Threads are good. The insert repair was a success. Yes. All right, now I can bust off the timing belt, get this thing retimed, get the covers on. We're going to put it back in the car. Finally, six months later, I can fix the car. I'm a Subaru technician. All right. righty. Let us get our timing marks set up and in position. So we can see this little notch right here on the, uh, on the aluminum case. And there's another little notch or an indent rather 
or a line drawn right here on that uh, on that gear. You see it right there? So we need to line up that gear with the notch. It's also got this little dot here to give us a reference point. And there's the uh, the keyway, the woodwork, woodruff key, excuse me. There's the woodruff key down at the bottom of this gear. And that's also gonna be used as a reference mark. So we've got a vertical mark. We have uh, a vertical mark on the top and a vertical mark on the bottom. And if we compare to our diagram here, we can see, focus please, we can see the three tangs that are on that gear on the left hand side and three tangs on the right. That matches the three tangs over here, one, two, three. And then there's another three tangs on this side, one, two, and three right there. So I do believe that that is in the correct position. So let's double check our woodruff key and we can see that that is keyed down. And again, on our diagram here, the little square right there, the key faces down. So our crank is currently in the correct position. So let's get this thing turned in and line up that mark. At that point, we have to line up the marks on our cams on both sides, and then we can set up the, uh, the belt assembly right here. And it, there's also marks on the belt to help us align it. So we're just gonna give this thing a little bit of a turn, straight up and down. That looks good. Okay. Now over here on our cams, we've got, it's actually two sets of marks. There's a, there's a couple twin marks here, two lines. This one has two lines indented into it, but someone has put some paint on that. But we have to line up those two marks in reference to our diagram. See how the diagram's got the two double marks pointing towards each other. So we need to line those guys up next and then we can start fitting the, uh, the belt in position here. So, oh, that one's still pretty loose. Yeah. This one's the same. So we're good here. Let's line these guys up. They're pointed towards each other. And our mark on the left is pointed at that little mark in the cover right there. And we can see that also corresponds to the marks uh, on, our, on our paperwork. So let's start the belt. We'll go up and over, under the idler, over the crank, under the tensioner, and then we can set up the other side on the cams. So our belt also has a direction indicator because if we turn it backwards, the timing marks will not be correct. So the direction indicator uh, is to point off to the right. And this is also reflected on our diagram. So what we're looking for is we've got one mark, there's a mark, there's a mark, there's one, and one more right there. So I think we're gonna go with this mark, which is supposed to line up with the top of the cam. So we're just gonna set that on, get it mocked up a little bit. The other mark is going to line up with this mark right here on the cam. And then, we're gonna run this down and under that idler. These marks here line up with the dot and with the two notches, okay? So we'll send that over top, get that in position under the tensioner, like so. And then over here at our cam, we need to line up these marks. So I think that cam is under some spring pressure, or it will be. We need to get that guy set up and referenced with this notch on that mark. So let's turn this cam and get those marks in position. And they've got the double marks on the bottom just the same as, uh, as the other side. So I believe we go right about there. Let's turn that some, that's good. And then down below, can you guys see down there, bottom cam? That's a negative, there you go. We've got our other mark here on the belt, and then this thing is out of phase a little bit. So I need to turn this cam so our double marks line up with the double marks on the other cam. So there's several, several reference indicators for this engine. And down here, you guys can't see, Angle's all wrong for our dangle, but down here, 
We've got our line on the belt referencing to the mark on that lower cam. Stay, don't go anywhere. Stop it. Slip that guy back. Okay, that one's in. Good to go, okay. So now, we have to route this belt around the rest of the pulleys and around these cams over here. Then we can pull the pin on our tensioner and lock this system down. Right there is where we want it. Marks are lined up. Let's put some tension on it. Take away some slack from the rest of the belt. And the belt goes over that idler. And then it's going to go under this geared idler. See that one? It's close. So what I need to do is I'm gonna turn our left lower cam counterclockwise. That's gonna pull on this section of the belt, this section of the belt, and then all the rest of it. And ultimately that will turn into some slack over here so I can get this bottom gear uh, in position. I think that's how we gotta go. Or, try something else. It's gonna be tough to slip that thing in. Let's do, do this a different way. So now all I gotta do is slide this one up and over. So as I take away some of the slack and the rest of the belt, I should get the clearance here to slip this up and over. Let's double check our marks real quick before we finalize this. So what we've got is That mark is in position. That one's good. Two dots are lining up. We're a little out of alignment, but the belt's not on yet either. These two marks are in position. Good. That's good. This one and that one. That's actually a little off looking, but it does line up as best as possible. Then we've got this one and we are off a tooth on this cam down here. See that? That's an error. So we have to adjust this cam next. Redo. Let's pull this guy out. Keeping some tension on this just a little bit. Gravity. Oh, that one slipped. Oh, I lost it. Lost the cam. Okay. No worries. We'll spin it back and do it again. Slack out. Keep that belt lined up. Get in there. Get in the groove. All right, that one's back on. Yeah, we're getting there. Almost. Still have a bunch of slack in here somewhere. Pulling down with a wrench. There we go. Now it's over. So real quick, let's get everybody exactly in position. This is gonna pull slack. See what I'm doing here? This is gonna pull slack out of the line. So this is gonna be our slack side. Right here is our tension side, okay? So that's in position. We're rechecking the alignment of the whole system with its reference marks on the engine now. So that one's on. We're good there. 
That one's good. This one is good. And that one is good. So everybody's where we're supposed to be. All right, let's pull the pin. Here we go. And that's that, we have tension. It's anticlimactic, especially for its nickname of the grenade pin. So now what I wanna do is we're just gonna move this engine, roll it around a little bit. Stop becoming loose. I wanna kinda of wiggle the crank back and forth. That way all the tension and the any looseness in the belt can be evenly distributed. There we go, that's what I'm looking for. A little bit more that way. I'm gonna make sure these all line up perfectly because these two were a little off and I didn't really care for it, see that? But they all do line up with the marks in the belt, so I, I'm pretty sure that's good. It's either good or it's not. Yeah, those are slightly off as well. Not much, but I can identify it with my micrometer. So yeah, we're in time here. This is good. I know that's not the greatest looking, but also if we move that, we're gonna be a whole tooth off. And according to these marks, we're, we're on point here. So double, 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 single, 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 single. And these are in position. So our timing is set up. We are good. Let's go ahead, get rid of the tool. And now I can go ahead and get the uh, my covers and whatnot back in position. Okay, so this next part, I'm gonna have fun with this because I've had these covers off of here for so long, I, I barely know where they go. But I guess shapes and colors is gonna be my saving grace on this one. Let's make sure the seal is in position here. Yeah, bottom seal's good too, okay. Let's get this thing fitted and bolted on, then we'll do our end covers those guys in. I'm not really concerned about where the covers go. I'm concerned about where the bolts go because I it's been so long. I don't know. But we'll start with the, I guess what we know. I know that that bolt and the other similar bolts with this little shank on them go inside of these holes. So we'll start with that. It's fine. If I strip the holes out, I got time certs. So we're good. I know, bad joke. Too soon? Uh, that one's in the water pump, that's good. Get this one up here. I want that one right there. Here we go, down below. That's a different kind of bolt. But it fits. Uh, no more over here. This one up here has a broken off ear on the plastic, so I'm not gonna put that bolt in. And I need one more for, looks like over here. That was a lot of gravity. That was a whole magnet tray full of fasteners. It's not okay. Oh, what happened here? And none of those fasteners are magnetic. Okay. Water pump bolt. Don't need that. I bought new ones. Okay, let's try this again. Here you go. No, 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 I don't even know. There. Okay, now it looks like we're putting the covers on. There's one. So we used long, one long bolt, two shorter ones for these covers, okay. That explains those, uh, those long bolts. There's one. Slide that guy in, good. That one goes there. Numero tres. cover on the other side. Slide this guy up and over. Nice fit. Three fasteners. There we go. Okay, harmonic balancer slash crankshaft pulley. Let's get that guy in next. Not with that socket. That's because it was a 22. 
right, here is our crankshaft pulley and it also is keyed to fit that woodruff key at the bottom of the crank that way the pulley can't spin so let me line that guy up with the key that's good that bolt back in send it we guys she's back together now i've got the covers on it's in time the water pump's been replaced the broken timing tensioner bolt inside the cover has been replaced we put a rear main seal on it uh my engine stand is actually in use over here troy's got it with an s10 say hi troy hi. bye yeah, the engine stand is in use. We've got an S10 uh, out of the vehicle, or the engine out of the vehicle. It's a four cylinder S10. Uh, horrendous oil pan leak in the back. And the book says you have to pull the motor out to change the oil pan gasket. And that's because that pan, see that, uh, see the trough in that pan right there? That sits right on top of the K member right here. So you cannot get the thing out. Um, you can't lift the engine up enough because it runs into the firewall. And uh, since this is a four cylinder, we just went ahead and pulled the thing out just to, uh, just to make life a little bit easier and to make sure we can reseal this pan properly. Uh, there will be one major modification though to this. Uh, the problem is, is this thing comes with cork gaskets and I hate cork. Cork is not a long-term solution. I was not able to locate a non-cork gasket for this oil pan. So instead of using that, I'm just gonna have one made out of the right stuff. Not sponsored, that's just what I use. This is really good stuff. Um, it's basically going to be a glue that seals this pan together. So we're just going to replace the cork gasket uh, with the Permatex right stuff RTV sealant uh, because this is better than that and that's what I'm gonna use. This stuff did not exist when this stuff was in use. So that's why we're, uh, we're upgrading it because gravity because I do not want to do this oil pan job again. And I know Troy does not want to do this oil pan job again, right? No. Are you learning something? Is it, you don't like it? Is it fun? Uh, it's all right. Yeah, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's heavy line work. He doesn't want to do it. Actually, I'll rephrase. It's not a Jeep, so he doesn't want to do it. Right. Hey, if I take a Sawzall and I cut seven slots in the front of this, will you, will you feel better about working on it? Um, tell, tell the people, what do you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you got a Jeep problem. We're working on that. We're working on his Jeep problem. Oh, and the transmission's over there on the sand. I also figured it was going to be easier to just pull that trans out uh, in chassis before we pulled the motor out. And it was, it was. It took like an extra hour or so, but it did work out more better. -er, so we just decided to pull the whole drivetrain out. And then my bright idea, I see this with no engine and I go, hey, this would be a great candidate for a V8 swap. And then I thought about maybe I should buy that. And then I went, no, I'm pulling a Troy. Don't buy it. Don't buy it on impulse. Walk away. Well, that's not my project. That's someone else's project. Walk away. So yeah, I'm not going to buy that. I wanted it though. I wanted to do a V8 swap in an S10, but yeah, uh, I'm not going to do it. Anyway, guys, uh, we're all set with this. We're almost all set with that over there. So uh, next phase of this Subaru is uh, I need to get the engine stand back, get this on the stand. We're going to flip her over. We're going to pop that oil pan off reseal the oil pan then we're probably going to take this outside and pressure wash it just to get all the schmoo off of here and all the nasty and the buildup and the runoff and everything else we're going to clean all that stuff off and then at some point i'll be able to push that rubisu back into the shop there she is over there i'll put it back into the shop and we can get that thing back into its home and then maybe back on the road one day so uh having said all that guys i'm going to go ahead and close this video out right now it's starting to rain it's getting late in the day i'm going to start packing it up so uh, as always, like thank you guys for watching this video. Certainly hope you enjoyed this video. If you all oh, rain, if you did enjoy this video, please let me know about that in the comment section down below. Do not forget to tap that like button while you're down there. And most importantly, have yourselves a fantastic day. See you guys later in the video, in the Subaru engine repair, in the transmission.